Well, what I know, Kieran, is even though she didn't mention China in her press conference, I'm told that the Environment Minister, Susan Lee, specifically mentioned China in the Coalition Party room, uh, with the hint being that there was uh, this was another example of the sort of coercion tactics that China has been using against Australia. And Barnaby Joyce also uh, addressed this issue when he said, uh, according to the account that, uh, that I have, he, he first of all, he praised Michael McCormack as a nice guy, not perfect, but tries to get stuff done. But then he said, we have international challenges. Just look at the Barrier Reef decision and we need to make hard decisions to build our economy to face those challenges down. So what at least one MP took from this, Kieran, was that uh, a tough person is needed in the Nationals' job, not a nice person in the Deputy Prime Minister's job as we face these challenges with China. Also got to tell you, out of that party room, Scott Morrison said, we will win by staying focused on the Australian people, I'm told, which sounds almost like a bit of a swipe at the Nationals, doesn't it? He's certainly hoping there's no more trouble after this. Anyway, uh, Bob Catter, the independent MP, he asked a question in relation to the UNESCO decision, the draft decision that I'm talking about, to have the Great Barrier Reef listed as in danger and Environment Minister Susan Lee ended up picking that up a short time ago. The Courier Mail front page, Sir David Attenborough labelling the Great Barrier Reef magnificent, not endangered, but magnificent. Are you aware that China holds the chairmanship of UNESCO, currently meeting in China? Isn't the proposed declaration by UNESCO of the Barrier Reef as endangered a serious erosion of Australia's sovereignty and yet another intrusion into the control room of our country? I thank the member for Kennedy for his question and reassure him that Australia will always stand up for our national interest. We will work closely with all state parties in the World Heritage System to ensure they understand why Australia believes it is wrong to single out the best managed reef in the world for this potential in danger listing. Now, Kieran has interviewed the Deputy Leader of the Nationals, David Littleproud, and later in the program we'll play that full interview. Some interesting comments in there, including about the reef decision. And here we have an organise, international organisation tucked away in, in New York uh, making, making assessments on us over here in, in Queensland uh, without any science, without actually doing proper due diligence, uh, is just ridiculous. And I think um, it, it actually belittles the, the organisation that it's actually there to represent. And we would encourage them to actually revisit that and, and try and have a good hard look at, at the facts and the science rather than doing it from the desk of, of uh, the UN. Now, I revealed yesterday that there were two motions in the National Party room when it came to taking Michael McCormack out of his job and installing Barnaby Joyce as Deputy Prime Minister. The first was a spill motion, which Barnaby Joyce was successful in calling the spill. Michael McCormack could have, could have got the hint of that and pulled out of the race, but because he ran against Barnaby Joyce, David Littleproud lost his opportunity to run. He was hoping to run, and Kieran asked him about his leadership ambitions in this interview. Did you want the job? Uh, every one of the 21 of us in the National Party, I think, want the job, uh, but sometimes it's not your time, and it's not your time. It may never be your time, and, and I'm comfortable with that, uh, but we all have aspirations uh, to lead the party, all 21 of us, uh, but if it doesn't happen, you've got to still be content with what the political gods have given you, and I can tell you I've probably been given uh, more than any others, so I'm very content that I've still got the opportunity, firstly and foremost, to be a federal member of parliament to represent Maranoa, but also uh, to be given a portfolio of agriculture which is sort of the holy grail of being uh, in the National Party. And despite all the rhetoric, you get the sense the Nationals are going to tick off on a net zero emissions by 2050 target from David Littleproud's answer to Kieran in this interview, but that they're going to seek to extract a price for it, perhaps protecting agriculture, agricultural industries, mining jobs, who knows? But uh, have a listen. It's only going one way, and if the farmers can, as you say, be there when you're cutting the cheques, 
there's, there's actually a huge opportunity. The farmers get it, the gnats don't. Well, I don't think that's right. We, we get it all right, but we're not going to trade ourselves away until we see the detail and see what we can get. That's just good business principles. I don't know how many deals you've done, but you don't, you don't give away your end price straight up. Uh, so, you know, we're going to look at it. Um, we're going to see what we can get and make sure that no one's hurting, but we also start to square that ledger because uh, we've copped it in the neck in regional Australia for everyone to sleep soundly in metropolitan Australia, and it's time that our mob got repaid for it. So we had quite an uncomfortable few moments in question time there where Barnaby Joyce was asked by several female opposition MPs about his uh, comments by the WA Nationals leader, for example, Mia Davies, that she didn't want to see him back in the role after he was accused of sexual harassment, an accusation that was never sustained and resigned last time. He, he uh, vehemently denies that, Barnaby Joyce. And Anne Webster, too, a Nats MP, had some interesting comments with Ashley Gillen a short time ago, saying that some people were ecstatic that Barnaby Joyce was in the job and some people were concerned. Yeah, some people are ecstatic, some people are really concerned. And I think ultimately uh, Barnaby's the only one who can prove his mettle as leader.